Hey guys, what's going on? And welcome to episode number 19 of Gamers Digest. In this episode, we're going to be talking about Star Wars The Old Republic questions and answers. Recently, the community manager for Star Wars The Old Republic, Stephen Reed, decided to take a few questions on Reddit. Here are some of the questions that I thought were pretty interesting and pretty important, I think. I will give you a warning that most of these questions don't have an answer. Most of them are just like, we're working on it, or we know it's an issue, blah, blah, blah. But it is good that they're addressing them. This first question regards to spell delay. This is a huge issue right now. There's a lot of just glitchy things about it, especially with assassins. Things like Maul that have a positional requirement and the ability delay tacked on top of it make it really hard to pull off. Um, there, there's another issue with Maul where you're, you're, you'll do the animation, but the attack just won't go off. And it's just some retarded positional... I don't know, it's all lag for, from, from what I've seen. But this is a big issue, and I'm glad that they're addressing that this is an issue. Even though they don't have a real answer for it right now, it is pretty classy of them to actually say, hey, we know this is a problem, and we're working on it. Alright, next question. This next question is about mods. When are we going to be able to use mods? A lot of people are crying, they want add-ons, they want, you know, the ability to make add-ons. And this is something that I, I don't think I have a very popular opinion about. I'm not a really, I'm not really a big fan of mods, because mods always turn into something that... They're harmless at first, and then they eventually just start playing the game for you. Now, I don't mind things like UI mods. Like the, being a healer right now in Star Wars is tough because the health bars and the and your your unit frames don't even work. So I can understand why people want mods in that sense. But eventually, mods just transform into this thing that plays the game for you. You look at things like Gladius. Uh, Gladius doesn't really play the game for you, but it helps you immensely. I mean, immensely. It's it's insane how much a mod like that will just improve you. And then you have mods like Gladiator LOSSA, which started to show up towards the end of WoW, uh, towards the end of me playing WoW, and that mod straight up plays the game for you. Cloak of Shadows, Shadow Dance, Blade Storm. I mean, it tells you exactly what everyone's doing. On the PvE side of things, you have things like Deadly Boss Mods. Fire's coming in 5 seconds, run away, run out of the fire. This comes back in 10 seconds, move to the center. I mean, it tells you how to play the game, and I'm not a big fan of that, but I'm not going to lie to you right now. If there was a mod like Gla uh, Gladiator LOSSA or, or Gladius that became available for Star Wars, I'm going to use it. I'm not going to you know, put myself at a disadvantage by not using it, but I, don't, I think they might need to just improve the UI before you just open it up to modding. <laughs> This next question regards to mounts. Are there going to be non-mechanical mounts in the game? Uh, apparently there's going to be more pets, but non-mechanical mounts are a technical issue. I'm not really sure what that means, but I would like to see some non-mechanical mounts. I want a Tauntaun. Please give me a Tauntaun mount. I will be so happy. There's a lot of really cool uh, really cool mounts that could be in this game. I know, I think it was uh, episode 3, where Obi-Wan gets on the back of that lizard thing that just like screeches around. That would be a cool mount. Uh, Tauntaun, definitely. Uh, Bioware. Please. Tauntaun mount. I would be so happy. This next question regards to neutral gear. Now, I have this problem. I went, I was slightly neutral when I first started leveling up. I, I made a few dark side decisions, but mainly light side. I have, I don't know, like, probably like 200 to 300 dark side points and all the rest of them are light side. And I can't get some of this light side gear from light side vendor, and I'm level 50. Um... There isn't any neutral gear in the game right now, so I can't imagine if someone went, like, completely neutral. They must be completely fucked right now. Um, there does need to be a neutral gear vendor. Uh, I, again, this is something, and I know this is going to sound bad, but this is something that didn't make it into the game because the game was rushed. This game was rushed out to get out by Christmas this year, and that was a good decision by Bioware. A lot of people gave this game a chance that wouldn't have given this game a chance because they got it for Christmas. I think eventually there will be a neutral vendor, but it's not something that's going to happen quickly. I already know that this is something that's not going to be put in the game the next patch. There's a lot more important things they should be focusing on. And I recommend if you're stuck in a rut like me, pick up Diplomacy. Diplomacy is a really easy way to go completely light side or completely dark side. It's really easy to get a lot of uh, a lot of points in either or. Uh, that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to drop. Um, not sure what I'm going to drop, but I think I will be picking up Diplomacy. And from what I've seen, uh, the stuff from the light side and dark side vendor is not super amazing uh I, at least from the pvp side of things i don't know if there's like a really op pve uh relic or something but i haven't seen anything way like really really game breaking and coming from 
a game design point of view, I wouldn't think they would put something really game breaking on a light side or dark side vendor. But maybe they have uh, somebody in the comments. Is there something that's just really, really good that comes from either of those vendors? I wouldn't think so, but that's just me assuming. And you know what they say about assuming. This next question is about guild banks and guild ships. My opinion on this is it would be cool. I hope this gets into the game at some point in the future. But again, there are way more important things to work on. I think a guild ship would be pretty nifty. I'm not much of a fan of guild banks. I feel that guild banks always lead to drama, people stealing things, people getting hacked, and their hackers taking everything out of the guild banks. And I've really just never been a fan of it. Douglas may disagree with me. Maybe, uh, maybe since he runs the guild, he knows more about the importance of guild banks. But I've never, I've never used one. The only time I've ever used a guild bank is when I have a bunch of crap in my bank that I want to move to another person's bank, and I'll just toss it in the guild bank temporarily. But um, again, guild banks, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind being in the game. Guild capital ships sounds cool, but a lot more things are important in my opinion. And I feel that, uh, well, I guess Bioware does agree with me. Yep. So that's what I that's what I think about that. My final question I'm going to cover is about advanced class respecking. A lot of people were really, really sad when they figured out they couldn't respec their advanced class, even though when they did the quest, it says, you can't redo this. This is permanent. You can't change it. But I guess they didn't read that. But um, anyway, advanced class respecking. If you didn't know by now, if I choose to be a Sith assassin, I can't go back and be a Sith sorcerer at this current moment. I do think, uh, even though they say this is not on the table at the moment, I think this will eventually be in the game at some point. Hopefully it's not, like, something bullshit like paid server transfer faction. I hope it's not, like, you pay for it with real money. That would be really stupid. And by the way, if you're watching this, please never do microtransactions. I don't care if you do, like, server transfers, but don't make... Don't be like, uh, you can change your spec for $50. Like, don't do anything like that. I'm okay with server transfers, race changes, whatever, but nothing like that. Okay, uh, back on topic. So, advanced class respecking. This is something that, um, you know, I don't really have a problem with the fact that you can't do it, but I do think that this will be a really good opportunity to put some credit dumps into the game. Um, if you're not familiar with what a gold dump is, it's basically something that they put in the game to take money out of the economy. Um, or you'll see what happens in WoW. Um, Cataclysm didn't have any, uh, any gold dumps like Wrath Lich King did, and that's why everyone had so much gold, and that's why people were just, like, throwing gold at us on live streams. It's because everyone had like 30k gold and there was nothing to do with it. Gold was useless. But if you put things like credit dumps, uh, like an example of a gold dump would be the Traveler's Tundra Mammoth. Uh, Wrath of Lich King was really good about putting gold dumps into the game. And I feel like that changing your advanced uh, class could be a big gold dump. It could cost like 10 million credits and you could change your advanced class. And that would take a lot of money out of the economy. And I think that'd be a good way to go about it. Uh, I, I don't think it'd be that game-breaking to let someone change their class for 10 million credits. I think that's pretty fair, unless 10 million credits, like, a year from now is really easy to get. And then they could up it or something. But, um, I, I think that'd be a, a great idea to do it. Make it a big, a huge astronomical amount, and you can change it. I wouldn't have any problem with that. I think it'd be a good way to get some credits out of the economy, deflate things a little bit, and actually make money valuable. And that'll wrap up this episode of Gamers Digest. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to see the full questions and answers thread, I'll put a link down to the Reddit forum where you can see all the questions and answers. I just picked out seven questions that I thought were pretty interesting. And in true Gamers Digest fashion, we're going to be doing a giveaway. This week, I'm giving away Star Wars The Old Republic, the Standard Edition. And if you already have that, then I'm going to be giving away 30 days free of game time. And what's cool about this prize is a subscriber actually gave it to me. He accidentally bought two copies of the game and decided to give me the second copy that he accidentally bought for me to give away in Gamers Digest, which is pretty cool. Saved me some money, and uh, we get to spread the love a little bit. In order to have a chance to win uh, either the 30 Days Game Time or the game, all you have to do is thumbs up, favorite, and comment on this video, and also be sure to be subscribed to Gamers Digest by clicking the blue Gamers Digest text up in the title and clicking the subscribe button. I'll be choosing a winner from the comments right before the next Gamers Digest comes out, so be sure to check your PM box. And that'll wrap up this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.